And now we have a medical missionary sister who will share with us some useful information on prayer and fasting. And so the first question is, what is the best time to begin prayer and fasting? What's the best time? Yes, the best time to begin prayer and fasting is closing off the evening before six o'clock and then um, resume the following morning. And that's when all, all your fasting will begin. Six o'clock, from the six o'clock the following evening. So in other words, if I am going to do a fast, let's say tomorrow, starting tomorrow, it would best to have my last meal at about six o'clock for yes, today. Yes. Okay. Okay. And so the next question is that what happens to the body when a person goes into fasting? What really takes place inside one's body? Okay. Your liver plays a very important role. It detoxifies. That's one of the functions of the liver, detoxifying the, the system. When you go on fasting, uh, whatever is stored in the fat cells, they are toxin. When nutrient comes into your body, the, the liver will distribute those nutrients and whatever is remained, then the liver stores it as fat soluble toxin. When you go on fasting, when you start your fasting, what happens, your body now starts to release that fat-soluble toxin. Now, some of these fat-soluble fat toxin doesn't only mean the food that we eat, but it also comes from the environment. The smoke, uh, chemicals that we use, those, the cleaning agencies, those are referred to as toxin within our environment so we cannot escape toxin so they are stored when they enter the body when you go on fasting that now releases the goes in the bloodstream the liver sees it and says oh dear now we have been toxin in the body let us send it back to fat but during your fasting you need uh to do some mopping up with those toxins. Whenever you start the mopping up, then the liver will identify that, okay, I have help. I don't have to send it back to storage. The, you have three stages, three phases, going through fasting. And when you do fasting, it's, it's, really, it's really detoxing. And the, the first phase, it releases that toxin. Fat soluble cannot be released from the body. It has to be water soluble. And what it releases, it's called metabolite. And that is more dangerous than the toxin that is in your body. It is 100 times more toxin. It releases free radicals. And free radicals damages the tissues in our bodies. And when, you, when those metabolites are released, you know have to take within phase one, which is the first 36 hours, you have to now take antioxidants. Antioxidants are like the mop, the mop that is going to mop up. Okay, so the antioxidants, its nickname for it is free radical scavengers. What it does, it mops up those free radicals that is swimming around in the body, detoxing the body, toxin the body. Now, what are the what are some of the next question I, I presume you'll be asking? What are some of these antioxidants? They are beta carotene, and this is found in your green and orange colored vegetables. So the juices that would serve are usually either green or red from the beetroot or orange. Another potent antioxidant is vitamin C. And some persons choose to take supplements, but vitamin C supplements, if you do not see that this vitamin has bioflavonoids, it's not complete. So you, if you're gonna take a supplement for vitamin C, you will have to ensure that the vitamin C has bioflavonoids. Then you'll be getting the whole vitamin C within your body. So the antioxidants is very important. It is the scavengers for the metabolites. 
Now, after 36 hours of beginning a detoxing fasting program. So, in other words, you're yes. saying then that when a person goes into fasting, their body is being detoxed. Yes. So, they are benefiting. Yes. So, when the body is detoxing, it wants to get or expel those free radicals. Yes. But in order to expel it, the body has to be aided. Yes, it does. Because so, just to interject, whatever toxin is there, remember it is stored as fat in fat soluble state. And fat soluble state cannot be released from the body. It has to be uh, be turned into water soluble state. And water soluble state releases three ways, urine, sweating, and the colon. Okay. So with this process, getting it from the fat, it cannot be released. So it is more dangerous. So you're saying that persons can actually do a fasting and damage their body instead of getting the benefits yes. from it. They'll be doing more harm than good because with these free radicals, as I said before, it damages tissues in the body. So, 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 so just going on a fast, the body doesn't necessarily just flush itself. No. You have to, you, you, you have, have to, to aid, aid it. it. Yes. And, and what are some of the ways that we can aid the body as you were explaining? Okay. They're, they're in phase, in phase one, that's the first 36 hours. Okay. In phase one, it takes in 36 hours and it's a two days fasting on juices. Now, what are the juices predominant of? 80% carrot, 10% celery, and 10% apple. Now, you can increase the celery, reduce the apple, and reduce the carrot. Put in your beetroot. As I said previously, we need better carotene, which is coming from the carrot. Anything orange, green, yellow, red, those are antioxidants. Now, this juice is called the vegetarian juice, sometimes nicknamed the vegetarian milk, because you can just about subsist on that. It is full of all the nutrients that your body needs to mop up all of that. Now, the, the, the time in which you're going to take these juices to aid the body, every two hours. So you'll start in the morning, 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 12 midday, 2 p.m., and the final juice will be 4 p.m. Now, with these juices, after 36 hours, you will have to put in now your protein, which you're going to kick into phase two. So let us go recap. Phase one releases metabolite. It has free radicals. It is 100 times more toxin and it's highly volatile. So in other words, then you're saying then that the vitamin C, so antioxidant and the vitamin C and vitamin A and these fruits and vegetables, yes. juice that you spoke of, mm -hmm. it's like you're cleaning your house. Yes. So you get a mop with some soap mm -hmm. and you're doing the first rough cleaning. It's like having your shed or your storeroom. You pull it down or in your kitchen cupboard, you pull it down and it's look worse than when it just started. Yes. And you're cleaning. So when you pull it down, it's basically the same thing with the, the toxin. It releases, so it, it gathers everywhere in your body, free radicals, everything is, is, is accumulating. And then the cleanup process, which is the antioxidants, cleaning up, we clean up the cupboard and then packing back the stuff them now. Then it, it kicks into phase two, so, so phase two, so phase two, as will be explained, is the reason why some persons, when they are fasted, mm -hmm. they would have had some side effects like a headache, dizziness, dizziness, pain, fainting. fatigue. Yes, because in phase two now, it needs to come out. Okay, your so that's like your you have washed out I need the, the, the mop. Now. And now you want to use some clean water now yes. to, to, to do another work of cleaning up the soap. Final cleaning. Yes. And if just like cleaning, if it's if, if you're cleaning somewhere and you don't have an exit or any clean agent to clean it up, final cleaning, then it's going to stay stagnant. 
So, so a person would just go on a fast and the body wants to detox during mm -hmm. that process. Mm -hmm. But the body is not being aided by any juices, as all you have explained, and vitamin some, C. Sometimes and they're only aided with fruits, juices, because some persons decide to go on a fruit fast. Yes. But during the 36 hours, after the 36 hours, it's going to need something to take that detoxing out, which is going to need protein. Because in phase two, that's where protein will be introduced. Protein is amino acids. That's a building block for our cells. Now, amino acids, it's linked with the metabolite. So when it grabs it, the companion, it goes out as water soluble. So without the protein, it stays stagnant and it contaminates the body even more. So, so these things are very important to know yes. because naturally and normally people would just go on a fast, not eating anything mm -hmm. and, uh, and so on. But, but it all depends for some persons. If you have been doing a regular cleansing of the body, detoxing of the body as often as is recommended, then it would have been a different case. For example... It wouldn't be so volatile, but it would have had some 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 level of toxin as i said earlier you have environmental toxin yes the we, air that we breathe the colognes the sprays the, the chemicals we use as cleaning agencies you know and the smokes in the air but that would speak volume to moses when he fasted for 40 days he was in the presence of god right. there was no so there was no there. toxin there right. and jesus himself it also shows us Oh, he was truly a pure sacrifice mm -hmm. because his body was so pure, mm -hmm. free from toxin, yes. that he could have go on a fast for 40 days and not being affected like oh we are affected even today. And as you have rightly said, we have more toxin today. Yes. So fasting is not necessarily abstaining completely from food. No. But as we have spoken earlier when we spoke about the daniel fast, fast yes we spoke about the he, daniel he had fast nothing pleasurable so he did not abstain from food completely he just abstained from the the food regular appeasing food yes. that we would normally eat because the bible said that he, abs he did not eat anything pleasurable. pleasurable yes yes so go ahead with the explanation on the so when if you're solid. going to do the juicing now we are talk about 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 4 o'clock. We do a green juice at 8. We do a protein at 10. And this, when you include the protein on the first 36 hours, because those persons are highly toxic. So, as you had, so what um, are some of the signs of a toxic body, per se? They have big tummy. They are easily tired. Because fat, fat solubles... Fat toxin, solid fat soluble toxin, it's stored in the body as fat. The glucose that we we um obtain, because a lot of persons a lot of carbohydrates, and when the body releases glucose from those, get get it from those, then the liver sends whatever to the cells to give it energy. If If the body has too much glucose, which a lot of our generation today is... So we are not saying that a person cannot go on a fast without eating anything, but we are saying that it all depends most time of the health of that person's body. Mm -hmm. And so if it's a person that regularly cleanses his or her body or detoxes is our, our body then maybe it might be a different case the effect may not be that much but for a lot of persons who hardly detox and a lot of persons who have a lot of fat around the tummy and other places on the body yes. then it might be a different case yes. for such person the such person would need these juices so the person wouldn't eat their normal food so you're saying there would be time that the person takes some fruit juices and, and also protein, maybe a protein, protein shake, shake. Or and so. why why would introduce a pea protein shake on the f the first morning in between 
is because that person is highly um, intoxicated in terms of the fat soluble toxin and these signs are like fatigue overweight the big tummy you know the the body mass should should go according to the height so they should know their their body mass in comparison with their height because most persons are well overweight and that is due to toxin and toxin are stored in the fat solubles but these information are very valuable because normally we would just hear about a fast being held mm. and persons going on a, a few days of fasting and so on. But these things are not explained. Okay. And then that person leave not being benefited, benefited from the because fast. fasting is not, as we have said earlier, to appease God. But we benefit physically and spiritually in the process. And so one of the physical way that we benefited is that the body should detox and cleanse. freeze itself, mm -hmm. cleanse. Mm -hmm. So that if the body, if the blood is pure, then the mind will become even purer or clearer to discern more truths. The funny thing is, when I see advertisements or hear advertisements, everywhere, every spa, so to speak, they are introducing detoxing. They said you need to detox. Why is it that you need to be detoxing your body? It's because of the things that we eat and the benefits that it gives to our body. So for us, knowing the health laws, knowing we want the connection with God, our Creator, it's more important for us to keep our bodies healthy and to keep our minds healthy and open, just as it indicates as Moses and Jesus himself was in the presence of God. And this is one way how we can detoxify our bodies. So you can continue on the second phase. Yes. So the first phase takes in uh, antioxidants, mopping up the free radicals from the metabolite. The second phase, if a person is well uh, have a lot of toxin instead of having five the five different hours of green juice or red juice or the, the yellow juice they would have to include protein shake so it start the morning eight o'clock with green juice ten o'clock protein twelve o'clock green juice two o'clock protein and ends it with a green juice that's when a person is well, highly toxin. Now, on the following day, instead of starting with a green juice, they start at 8 o'clock with a protein drink because now we are combining the metabolite with the amino acid to send it out, to release it as water-soluble so that the body can release this within um, 36 hours. So, in other words, a, a person who regularly detoxes mm -hmm. would need to. No, they can just go the, 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 first, the first day on juices, yeah. and then the second day they would introduce protein. Okay. okay. Yes. They would introduce protein, and you will take protein three, uh, three times, three for, the, for three of those times eight, 12, and four. Now, there's a very important question. How many people include protein when they're on a fast? Well, I would think it's very minimal. Now, we are dealing with more fat-soluble toxin than any generation who has ever lived on this planet. The things that we eat are so fatty. The environment is so toxin. Because it's a pea protein, it's pre-digested protein we want to bypass digestion so we would not take in food as in the lentil beans being cooked but we'll take it in a shake form so we'll take the pea protein shakes instead of eating the lentils and the uh, other beans and nuts and seeds we want it to bypass the digestion because we are fasting this is why you strain all the fiber out of everything when we are doing the green juices and the protein. So it is important that we include protein, especially when we are 
the toxin and if the liver sees the, tox um, the toxin released from the body, it's going to send it to storage again because it does not see any nutrient coming in to mop it up, mop up those free radicals. So in phase one, you have to have antioxidant as soon as those free radicals start to release. In phase two, you have to include protein for it to combine with metabolite to release it in phase three, do the, um, to kick in phase three process, which releases these free radicals and so toxins. Fa so phase three is the releasing process. Releasing process, either, water soluble. Either it goes through the urine, the sweat, or you would- Colon. Or the, or the colon. Yes. So that's phase three. So what normally happens to the body um, during fasting, let's say like the smell or oh, the yes. breath. Oh yes, during fasting you will, yeah. during fasting you will observe that your breath has a not normal smell. Your sweating doesn't smell right either. And even when you go to the bathroom, your feces doesn't have a pleasant smell. That's because your body is now in the detoxing phase. It's releasing, the fat cells are releasing once again, the fat soluble toxin as they're getting broken down. So it is coming out as water soluble. So that's when fat soluble is broken down and releasing and it gives off that smell. And, uh, and uh, we, we, we see the importance and uh, the gift of fasting, how much it benefits us physically and spiritually. Yes, it does. And so we want to get this information out because we don't want persons just to be fasting, claiming that they're fasting, and then you are losing the physical blessing oh. and even the spiritual blessing. Yes. And so these things are very important for us to note. Any other information we have? Yes, fasting, I would say, is another important factor, especially persons that are sick with cancer, because the cancer cells consume 15 times the glucose that is stored within our bodies. And if we go on a fasting, we, are, we end our, our last meal at 6 p.m. in the evening, and we start 8 o'clock the following morning, when we starve these cancer cells, it, when we starve these cancer cells, it will not have any time, any food to consume. And so the fasting is a pathway of recovering from cancers and killing the cancer cells. So many persons then, <clears throat> depending on their diet, let's say a person who eats a lot and they are sick, if they may be fast one time per week. And we're not talking about necessarily per and fast in person. Right, yes. But just to abstain from a meal yes. for once per week or so on would do great help than many medicines. Yes, it would. And they call this fasting that you do not eat after 6 p.m. until the following morning, 8 o'clock, intermittent fasting. That is so effective. You have about 15 hours of not eating, not feeding the body with glucose. And while other persons have active cancer cells, it's their natural cells, their regular cells as a uh, turn into the cancer cells because we consume a lot of carbohydrates and carbohydrates are, are what gives it the high glucose content, the sugar content that feeds this, these cancer cells and it consumes 15 times more than our regular cells. So you see the danger there. When we eat, when we have a bad eating habit, we eat right around the clock. We just had something to eat two hours after we're eating again. And the funny thing is, is that we are not feeding on the good stuff. We're feeding on all carbohydrates. So would you recommend then for persons to at least miss a meal each week at least once per week, w w would it be of great benefit to the body? Yes, it would. It would be of great benefit. It would bring healing and restoration. And, uh, you know, that is why most persons who have done intermittent fasting and missed a meal once per week, 
you'll find that their bodies are more free from certain sick, um, lifestyle sicknesses. And if we were practicing all this, then we would not have the high percentage of cancer and diabetes within our generation. And if we do a statistics, we'll see that in this recent generation, the statistics have gone up so high with diabetes type 2 and breast cancer. And, and this would lead to my next question. What are some of the activities that persons should do while fasting? Because sometimes we see persons fasting and they would stay home, sedating. lie down and read the whole day mm -mm. and abstain from food. What are some I of the activities? I am so happy that you mentioned about the activity because you see when these glucoses are stored, it's stored as fat. If you don't burn them, it's going to stay there. And, 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 and take in all the toxin and then you'll get fat. When you release these glucose, the glucose is supposed to give you energy, but the excess glucose that you have within your body, that's where the danger lies. So when we're on fasting, we have to use up those glucose that are stored so that we can get fresh glucose going in for the following day to have more energy because glucose is what gives us energy. So we should uh, do what? Drink a lot of water. We should drink a lot of water during the space of each meal. We should do exercises. We can do uh, moderate exercise to high intensity exercise, which keeps the blood flowing. Or what about uh, missionary activity like going house to house? Yes, because that will bring up a boat because you're doing walking and walking is good. So doing going in the mission field is an additive to your fasting because it's not you will take your mind off the fasting and it also brings the food so, yes and it yes. also brings something to you because you'll be sharing the word about god to others and so you'll be uplifting your spirit your soul you'll get in the spiritual bread so prayer and fasting is not to lie down and no not eat anything and say i'm just gonna read for the whole no. day the bible or i'm says, going to watch a program the bible says that when you're fasting you must not uh, hang down your face, so to speak, and be dull and, and, and sad. But it says that you must oil your face and be happy. Let no one know that you're in fasting. So how would you let no one know that you're in fasting? You'll be doing your regular activities. You will not looking down and sad. And what I've realized, some persons are that when they're doing fasting, the whole world knows that they're fasting because they look so depressed. They are secluded. Not saying that you can't, you can't take a time to meditate, but it must not be a sedative uh, confinement. You must expand. That's why you're going into fasting, to feed on the word. By sharing, that's how you gather strength. So if we apply this information then, prayer and fasting would be uh, enriching nourishing yes uplifting you feel experience so happy you not even know that you are you're on fasting and you also need your sunshine because imagine if we truly incorporate the missionary activity as a oh. as as not merely for the purpose of exercise right but as so not that we would go on the mission field to say hey i'm doing this for exercise no but as we have said in part one that we would have been fasting for souls. And so while fasting, we must also engage in the work of the Lord. And I'm saying that we could set apart that portion of the day so that we are involved in missionary activity and not just lying down or not just staying in one place and just reading but, or watching but to give you something. A, but to give you a little synopsis, when a child or children, they are playing, they are not aware that they are hungry. They will play for the entire day. And as soon as they stop, they say, oh, they just realize that they are hungry. But when they are inactive, they tend to, after an hour or two, they tend to want food, which in fact, they could be thirsty, they could be bored, or they just could be tired. So when we are out on the mission field, our mind will not be just focusing on food. Our mind will be richly blessed and we will not feel empty, but we'll be feeling full.
So this information would be so useful for diabetics too who would want to fast. Yes. That they they are not encouraged to totally abstain from all forms of food, mm -hmm. but they would apply the same application in terms of phase one, phase two, yeah. leading to phase three. And then the next question, what about children? Should we force the children to completely abstain from food and force them into a fasting or should we apply the Daniel fast to the children? Yes, we can apply the Daniel fast to the children because they are smaller and their system is more uh, using up the energy than adults. So we can't be saying, oh, we're going on a fast. Children, no food. Hmm. None of you will eat anything. We are going on a fast. No, we have to consider them because their metabolic system is more active. Yes. Because they are in a young stage where they are developing and it uses a lot of glucose and energy. So they burn more than the adults. So probably they will rather eat fasting and purr than yes. It will be it. more of a burden to them. And so, not as a blessing. So the Daniel fast would apply to them. Yes. So we could, could give fast. them their regular two meals for the day or three depending it, on, it, on, you know. on on the age of the child. They could get uh, the fruits. Yes. But not the pleasurable not regular the pleasurable food that regular they would have normally food, eaten. But fruits. But fruits. On a vegetarian diet, on a plant-based diet, you have a look at the food. Let's look at the protein content and the carbohydrates content. So God said to Adam and Eve, Behold, I have given you, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. A seed is a grain. Another seed, uh, uh, and then the grains are like barley, rye, oats, quinoa, millet. So we can get our protein from these fruits and grains without having any pleasurable food and still sustain us and give us the nutrient that our body needs during fasting and prayer. So in other words, as we will even summarize, so prayer and fasting is not just about not eating. Mm -mm. Are we just going in prayer and fasting with an expression that everybody knows that you're on prayer and fasting and we're doing it thinking that we're appeasing God. Mm -hmm. But no, it's the other way around. We are benefiting physically and spiritually. Yeah. And as we have said in part one is that God would have seen his spirit of sacrifice within you. Yes. That you are willing to sacrifice what you love, what you find pleasurable for the salvation of others. And so we must understand that these principles must apply, else what will happen if we do uh, fasting then and not applying these principles if our body is toxin? Hmm. What, what would happen to such person? We would do more harm to ourselves and, <laughs> and not getting anything spiritually. We'll be losing spiritually and physically. Because if those toxins that wants to release, to detox the body, doesn't find a way to come out because the body is not being aid, then the body will be more infected. Yes. And if it's more polluted, then the mind will be affected. Yes. So you have gone through prayer and fasting and not achieved the objective and of it. And some persons have gone through fasting and going through the detoxing phase. And instead of focusing on the word, they are being sick and have to be treated as a patient because of the process that they have gone through without proper knowledge and taking care of the body while going through fasting and prayer. So, brethren, we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful. And that's why we are exhorting the brethren and we are encouraging them to take this information useful. There is many more things that could be said, but this is where we will end the information for now. And so let us remain faithful. Let us understand that God wants us not to be, not to be fasting for any and any reason. Some of us, we fast for all kinds of things. We need a new car, we fast for it. We need trivial things, no bridging. 
prayer and fasting is a solemn issue, is a solemn service, and we should be very, very careful how we enter into prayer and fasting. Enter with the right spirit. Enter not for a selfish purpose, but enter with a purpose that we want to be a channel. We want our bodies to be pure physically and also spiritually that we can be a channel and a blessing to others. Let us be faithful. Let us hold on to the unchanging hands of God. Let us hold to the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Let us run the race with patience. Let us call a solemn fast and a solemn assembly and let God's people, especially those who are God's watchmen, weep between the porch and the altar. Even in these last days as we prepare for the mark of the beast crisis, let us be faithful. Let us remain true even unto death. In Jesus' name, amen.